So we've already seen how ping works and in this video we're going to be looking at a slightly different yet equally effective tool named Traceroute. So what is Traceroute? Well it's very similar to the ping command and if you haven't seen that video already and you're not familiar I suggest you go back watch that and then come back to this one. Just like ping Traceroute uses the ICMP protocol in attempt to establish communication to a remote host. It can be found on all operating systems and even on switches, routers and firewalls, so it's widely supported. What Traceroute does differently is instead of just telling us if a host can be reached or not, it tells us every hop that is used to get to the destination. So that begs the question then, what is a hop? Well, when you think about the world's computer networks, everything is connected together using routers. A hop is a layer 3 device typically a router that our data needs to pass through in order to get to the destination. This can be really handy if you're trying to figure out which direction or which route the traffic is taking. The way Traceroute collects a list of hops is actually really clever. It uses something called the time to live or TTL. TTL is a method of limiting the lifespan of data. For IP packets, the TTL is a counter that decreases for every hop that the data passes on its way to the destination. This is where the magic of Traceroute comes from. So let's say we want to reach the Google DNS server 8.8.8.8. When we do a Traceroute, our computer will send an ICMP request to 8.8.8, but with a TTL value of 1. This means that as soon as our request hits the first router, the TTL value will decrease to zero and the request will be dropped. The router would then respond back to our host with a message saying, time to live exceeded. Our computer then does something really clever. It takes note of the router's IP address that just responded. It then sends the same request, but this time with a TTL value of two. So now our request hits the first router, decreases the TTL value to one, and then passes it to the next router. Again, the TTL value reaches zero and then the message is sent back to the sending computer where we can take note of the second hop IP address. And this process will continue until either it hits the destination host or Traceroute hits its maximum hop count, which is usually 30. Let's switch over to my computer and I'll show you this in action. So this is my computer. Before I do anything, I want to start Wireshark. If you're not familiar with Wireshark, it's essentially a tool to show you all of the traffic being sent and received by your computer. I'll select our adapter, so Ethernet 0, and click the Start button. We'll use this to review after we run our traceroute command. So I'll minimize this for now. And to run traceroute, we need to open either a command prompt or PowerShell. So I'm going to simply go to the start button, type cmd for the command prompt and enter. Now we're using Windows, so the command we need to run is trace rt and then the IP address or the domain that we want to trace. So in this example, I'll use Google's DNS, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Now, if you're using Linux or Mac, the command will simply be trace root 8.8.8.8. .8 so once we press enter, we'll start to see the hops between my computer and Google's DNS server. Now, the downside to trace root is that it does take a bit longer to run than the ping command. This is especially true if you're trying to resolve each IP address to a host name. You can turn this off using the dash D command, but it still takes a bit of time. I'll save you the wait and fast forward this bit for you. Okay, great. As you can see, our trace route has now finished. The first one listed is my default gateway and then every public router after that. This allows us to see the exact path that traffic is taking. We also see some other bits of information here. The first column is the hop number. So this is the order of hops our request is taking. The next three columns are called round trip times. This is the time it takes to reach this hop and then back to our computer. This tells us how long it's taking to reach each hop and measure any kind of latency. 
The reason it shows three times is because Traceroute sends the request three times to ensure consistency. And then of course we see the IP address or the domain name for each hop. Okay, great. So now that's run, let's take a look at our packet capture to see what happened behind the scenes. So I've already stopped Wireshark. And if I open it up here, we can see this is captured a lot of traffic. So all we should do is filter at the top and just type ICMP to see just the ICMP traffic. If we look at the first message, we can see my computer, which is 192.168.1.235, sending a ping request to 8.8.8.8, .8 which is the Google DNS server. And if we look at the details at the bottom and open up the ICMP information, we can see this is a type 8 echo request. Now, if we look at the IP4 information and look at the time to live, we can see it's sent with a TTL value of 1. Now, let's look at the second message. So, this is the reply. So this is from 192.168.1.254, which is my default gateway. Again, if we look at the ICMP message protocol, we'll see this has sent a type 11, time to live exceeded. This is because we sent that first message with a TTL value of one. And when it hit that first router, that decreased to zero, prompting this time to live exceeded message. Now, what did our computer do? Well, it looked at the sending host, so 192.168.1.254, and it took note. And as you can see, that is the first IP address in our list. Now, remember, Traceroute will send this three times, and we can see that here, here. So in theory, the fourth message, which is here, 28.8.8.8, .8 should have a time to live value We'll check that in the IPv4. And yes, a time to live value of two. And the reply to that response is from 172.16.19.235. Again, if we select that, we can see in the ICMP, again, it's a time to live exceeded message. And what do we do? Well, we take note of the IP address and you can see that as the second address in our list. Now, sometimes you will see entries that say request timed out, and that's probably just because that particular hop is not replying to pings. And this process will go on and on and on until you can see at the bottom, we finally hit the Google DNS servers. So now we know how it works, let's look at how we can use this tool to do some troubleshooting. So let's imagine we're trying to reach a remote host. So we simply type ping 192.168.50.1. Hit enter. And as we can see, any second now, the ping has failed. So request timed out. Now there could be many hops between us and the device we're trying to reach. So we can use Traceroute to help pinpoint where the issue might be. So instead of ping, which says, nope, the host can't be reached, we can use traceroute to try and narrow down the problem. So to do that, we type trace RT and 192.168.50.1, hit enter, and it will start trying to collect all of the different hops between this computer and our remote host. Again, this can take a little bit of time, so I will speed this bit up for you. As we can see, we passed a couple of hops successfully, but after that, the responses stop. This would have continued to happen to 30 hops, but I decided to stop it as I know that it wasn't ever going to get there. This could mean a number of things. However, it's likely that the issue is happening on or after the last hop that responded. So this one being 10.0.2.2. I would probably start my search here and look for potential routing problems, firewalls, access lists, that kind of thing. Another example where traceroute can come in handy is when you're experiencing some type of latency. 
we can use traceroute to narrow down which hop is potentially causing the problem. So let's say we're trying to browse to www.certbros.com, but it is taking way too long to load. So if I type traceroute or trace RT www.certpros.com and hit enter, it will start to list all of the different hops between my computer and the certpros.com server. We will see all of the hops between us and the website. However, more importantly, the round trip timer for each hop. If one of the hops has a congestion problem, for example, this RTT time may be dramatically bigger than the others. In this example though, pretty much everything seems pretty consistent. We have three milliseconds, one milliseconds, 10, 13, nothing really to worry about. But imagine if one of these was 500 milliseconds, for example. We would know that potentially that hop is bottlenecking our request. So those are two pretty straightforward examples. You can also use Traceroute to look at things like routing issues or to confirm traffic direction. That's it for Traceroute, a widely supported command that along with ping can be used to troubleshoot a lot of different problems. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe. The support from you guys really helps this channel grow. Other than that, thank you for watching.